I was just thinking, at least Bill didn't talk about resolutions. Because that's my introduction. And then Bill got up and talked about resolutions. So between the bills, you've heard most of what I have to say. But it is New Year's Eve. And this is the time when a lot of people make commitments. They make resolutions. How many of you have, how many of you have written down a resolution? <laughs> See? Wise. If you don't set high expectations, you will meet them every time. I looked up some of the number one resolutions. You probably can guess most of these. It's just a few. To lose weight is a big resolution a lot of people make. To learn something new was high on the list. To work out more often. Debt reduction. More time with family and friends and eating healthier. Those are some of the top resolutions that people make. And then there's those of us who are just happy to be here with our pants on the right way. <laughs> Most resolutions don't make it. Bill talked about making it two weeks, and I think that's pretty good. <laughs> but people try to go alone. They try to, try to have this new diet all by themselves. They, resolutions aren't really attainable in the first place. I say I'm going to run a marathon by the end of January. That's just not going to happen. I might have a Star Wars marathon, but that'd be the extent of it. People give in too easily. They don't have a plan to achieve their goals. They just say, well, I want to do this, and that's my resolution. But they don't have a way to get there. Being devout is what we're talking about today. That's a term we hear a lot in regards to faith. You know, Catholics are devout. Uh, Jews are devout. Muslims are devout. We hear that. We're going to learn about being devout today out of Matthew chapter 3. I want to take a look at John the Baptist. I think by looking at his life, we can consider him to be devout. And I want to consider him to be completely devoted to his faith and to his Messiah and to the role that he was called to serve. I want to look at the Pharisees and the Sadducees a little bit and how they thought they were devout. But where did they go wrong? And I want to look at Jesus because that's always a good thing to do at church is to take a look at Jesus. There's a particular message that Jesus and John the Baptist taught that they held really high. And that message is of repentance and baptism. And I want us to know what that message meant to these two guys that we're looking at as, as kind of role models today. We agree that those guys, we consider them to be completely dedicated. Jesus and John, they were completely dedicated. And so we should know from the example that they gave us how we should be. If you consider these guys as role models, where do you stand? Are you devoted completely? Are you devout? What's it going to take? Let's say a prayer and take a look at some of the first part of our passage. God, thank you so much for the life of Christ that we have recorded in our scriptures. I pray that we would do a good job at looking through it, that we would do a good job at seeing the words that were written and seeing the actions that were made, and, and we can see the life of Christ as an example for us. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for John the Baptist and those examples we have today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 3. We'll look at the first six verses for now. Now in those days John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is the one referred to by Isaiah the prophet when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make ready the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John himself had a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem was going out to him and all Judea, and all the district around the Jordan, and they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins." There's a lot to say in that little chunk of Scripture right there. John the Baptist, who is this guy? Wandering around the desert in this sleek camel skin jacket, a nice leather belt to really bring the ensemble together. We can read for ourselves that he was a pretty good guy. He was devout. He was devoted. He was committed. But where did John the Baptist come from? If we flip back just a little bit, and we kind of skipped over some of this, but we look, we can see that his parents, Zacharias and Elizabeth, Zacharias was a priest, and even his mother Elizabeth, she was from priestly lineage as well. So he came from a pretty, pretty godly, priestly, upstanding family. They were righteous, and they kept the law. In fact, Zacharias was on duty. He was in the temple burning incense. They cast lots, drew straws, rolled dice, whatever they did, and he was the one that went in to light the incense before God. And an angel shows up with some news. And this was the same angel that we heard about last week. That We thought a lot about Gabriel last week bringing Mary that news. I think he, he probably leaves the temple here with Zacharias and goes straight over to Mary's house. 
And he tells Zacharias that he's going to be a father. And Zacharias, just imagine if an angel comes in this room and tells any of us here, you're going to have a child. A lot of us would probably laugh. We'd, no way. I'm way. I am way too old to be having kids. And I know you guys have a couple years on me, so. <laughs> Mary stayed with Zacharias and Elizabeth for a little while, and even, even then, little John in, in Elizabeth's belly got excited when Mary came in the door. And the next thing we see, John is coming out of the desert preaching repentance and baptizing people. Even Jesus gives John a little tribute in Matthew 11, 11. He says, Truly I say to you, among those born of women, this is Jesus speaking, there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Even Jesus puts John as he is a solid guy. This is a role model. If Jesus speaks so highly of this guy, surely we can look at him and see a good example for our life. He came wandering in the desert, which was a popular place for the prophets of old. That's where they went when they wanted to have a little chat with God. When they wanted to hear a message from God, they would go out. We see it with Elijah back in, in 1 Kings a couple of times there. And we know that in the desert was where the Israelites were when God gave them the law. It's even speculated that John the Baptist lived with a group called the Essenes. This was a sect, kind of like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Essenes, they were very devout. They lived kind of communally out in the desert. They didn't really have money. They didn't really have things. They, uh, many believe, practiced celibacy and spent their day in study of the scriptures. They would come together. They would do a ritual bath each morning to get themselves clean for the day, for studying God's word, for having their meals together. And they would spend their day in God's word. They were very devout, very dedicated to knowing and living God's word. They uh, even had a monastery of sorts near the Dead Sea and were resp responsible, it's believed, I wasn't there, I don't know for sure, that they were responsible for the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is one of the biggest, um, biggest collections, biggest discoveries we found supporting our scriptures today. All the copies and fragments, nearly a thousand scrolls and bits and pieces of what we have in our Bibles. There was a vast library which was preserved of these scrolls that they would copy, they would study, they would read, they would spend their days with. If John was with these guys, even if he wasn't, that was the lifestyle that he lived. And that shows us even more how devout John the Baptist was. We look at John and we see him as a man we can look up to because he was so dedicated. He lived in the desert. He came out of the desert wearing skin, eating locusts and wild honey. We know from just a little bit later in this passage that John even baptized Jesus. So with all we know about John, maybe we should take a look at what he taught. And maybe we should pay attention to his message. The message that God spoke through this devout man that we know as John the Baptist. His message was simple. Repent. It was the same message that Jesus preached. It was the same message that Jesus sent his disciples out with. Repent. It was even the same message going backwards that the Old Testament, the prophets, when they called people to change their attitude towards God, they were calling for Israel's repentance. What is repentance? What are the signs of repentance? Repentance is when you realize you've done something wrong and you confess that to God. You pray and you are remorseful. It's not a, dear God, I did it again. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. It's a remorseful prayer. You realize how wrong you are and that prayer leads to the final, you abandon that sin. So you realize you did something wrong, you confess it, you pray to God for forgiveness, and you leave it there. You don't just hold it in your hand and keep tight on that sin and ask God to forgive you so you can come back and do it again tomorrow, but feel a little bit better about doing it tomorrow. Maybe, maybe this message that John preached, that was the same message we see repeated throughout the scriptures, throughout this book, this collection of letters and writings that we, we refer to as the Word of God, we, we look at this with reverence. Maybe this is a message we should listen to that John brings us if we want to be devoted, if we want to be devout. Where do you stand? Are you devoted completely? Are you devout? What will it take for you? This all sounds good and easy. We can understand the Scripture is truth and that's what God calls us and we should repent and we should walk away from our sins and do a good job, but why then? Why do we struggle? Why do we struggle with this? Well, let's take a look at the next few verses. Verses 7, 8, and 9. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? 
Therefore, bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not suppose that you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham for our father. For I say to you that from these stones God is able to raise up children to Abraham. The axe is already laid at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. John tells this group of religious leaders to bear fruit in keeping with repentance and that God can raise up children from stones. Basically, if you don't live a life that reflects your repentance, you will be cut off. It's useless for you to go through the motions. It doesn't work to simply talk the talk and not walk the walk. God doesn't need you. God wants you. These Jewish leaders, these were men who knew the scriptures, who knew the prophecies of the Messiah. They knew better than anyone else. And they were coming to be baptized, which included that repentance. And John gives them a warning. There's nothing magical about the water. Being baptized doesn't make you change. You are baptized because you are changed. You are baptized because you are repentant. This is a touchy subject. We don't want to challenge what we've come to know. We struggle and to challenge church tradition. We hesitate to challenge church leadership that we've been raised with, but please, challenge me. Challenge the elders here. If there's something coming out that is not in the Scripture, let's sit down and talk about this. Let's look at the Bible and see what it says. That's the accountability that we talk about as a church body. We need to make sure that we are doing what God has called us to do. But here today, we're looking at how to be. Here today, we're looking at the example of Jesus. We're looking at the example of John the Baptist. We're looking to do what he did. So what we see John doing here is, <clears throat> pardon me, is challenging church tradition. He's challenging the leadership of the church, essentially. John's situation was a little bit different. Don't call me a brood of vipers, please. As we see, as we keep reading, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they struggled. They wanted to do the right thing. It's just like our New Year's resolutions. If I want to lose weight, if I want to read my Bible more, if I want to eat better, if I want to work out, whatever, but I don't do it, it does me no good. Wanting to do those things doesn't really help you do those things. Wanting to accomplish goals is no good if you don't know how to achieve them. If I want to lose weight, if I want to eat better and work out, and somehow I get in my head that a double cheeseburger curl every day is going to be the way to get in good shape, I'm not going to be pleased with the results, although I might actually stick to that resolution longer than two weeks. John knew what he was called to, and he was devoted. John was dedicated. John was devout. Where do you stand? Are you devoted completely? Are you devout? What will it take from you? Let's look ahead at verses 13 through 17. John tells where his devotion lies. He explains to whom it is that he is devout. 11 through 17. As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clear his threshing floor, and he will gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus, Jesus answering said to him, Permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. After being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him. And behold, a voice out of the heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. John explains what he's doing. He gives a little bit of warning to the religious leaders who come out to him. We can assume that they weren't very repentant because of John's warning to them. Maybe they were just coming out because everyone else was going out and they wanted to be in the in crowd, so they followed the crowd. Maybe they were really wanting to know the truth, but somehow they were missing the point. Either way, as John is telling them that he's baptizing with plain old water because of their repentance, the one who he referred to, the one whose sandals he's not fit to carry, shows up. Jesus, God in the flesh, this little baby that we talked about last week laying in the manger there, he's now a man, and he's come so that John the Baptist can baptize him. John was in the Jordan River baptizing people, and Jesus, Savior, Messiah, 
comes to be baptized. And I want to make this point here, since we're looking at what Jesus did, how He did it, so we know how to be. Baptism, as it was done in the Bible, which is God's Word, and we learned just a few weeks ago in 2 Timothy, all Scripture is inspired by God, profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Baptism in Scripture was done by immersion. This was done, Jesus was immersed into the river in order to fulfill all righteousness. So if we are looking at a couple of role models here to follow, John the Baptist and Jesus, these two are pretty decent role models. If we want to be a Christian, if we want to follow Him all of our days, if we want to be devout men and women, we need to know, first of all, what the Bible says in order to know who we are following, and we need to follow Him. Do you remember when you were a kid? And you saw that cool older kid or the, the movie star and you looked up to them. Maybe they had their hair a certain way and so you copied it. Maybe they dressed a certain way and so you would dress the same way. You saw someone who, who you respected, who you looked up to, and you wanted to be like them. So you tried to look and act like that person. What about Jesus? Do you want to follow him? Go all the way. If my New Year's resolution is to lose weight and eat better, I have to commit to that every day, every meal. I can't just choose to eat right on Sundays and do whatever I want on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I won't be happy with my results. I'll see results all right, and I'll probably have to buy a bigger pair of pants because of those results. But what about Jesus? Where do you stand? Are you devoted completely? Are you devout? What will it take? Baptism has caused a lot of arguing in the church. What I want to say to you, to my family, is that this is what the Bible teaches. This is the example we see. If you want to be a Christian, if you want to be devout, if you want to be dedicated, if you want to be like Jesus, we need to be doing the things that Jesus did. Churches have argued probably since the Holy Spirit came down on Jesus about baptism, about, about what words are said, about where you can and can't be baptized, about who can and can't baptize you, about how much water is involved. We're looking through the Gospel of Matthew, the account of the life of Jesus, the Messiah, Savior. We, you and me, we're trying to learn how to be by looking through the examples of the life of Christ. This is His example. He was baptized. We can read that He did it. We can read how He did it. Why do we hesitate? Why do we alter it? I worked with a campus ministry at a state university for six years before coming here. It was a lot of fun. It was really neat. Got to hang out with a lot of fun people, uh, played a lot of games, did a lot of ministry through a lot of those things, late nights, all that college stuff. And in that, we had a lot of conversations about baptism because these kids, some of them, had a faith background. Some of them did not, but we baptized kids, a lot of college students during those years there. One night, we finished up our worship service, which was on campus in the ballrooms, and there's no baptistry, surprisingly, in a public state university ballroom. And we had a couple guys that wanted to get baptized, so we told everyone there, we're going down to such and such a church. It's just a few miles down the road out of town. We're going to go there because I had a key and I could get in, and we were going to baptize these guys. So we drove over there, and we had 40 or 50 students join us down the road there, and it was great. We had guys get baptized, and, and as they're doing this, one guy, right before we start, one guy runs up and he says, I want to be baptized. And I'd been talking to him, and he had never been baptized before. It was such an exciting time, and he was baptized. And I was standing in the baptistry, and I looked out, and we had baptized. I was so excited for this, this kid that got baptized and the other guys that got baptized. And I said, anyone else? And this is what happened. That's Crawford. And I looked up and said, anyone else? And we'd been talking about it for a while. His sisters had been baptized. Abby was baptized in the same baptistry. We took Paige out to a spring because she's very outdoorsy and liked the 54 degree water. But when I said anyone else, Crawford knew. We talked about it. He knew what it meant. He knew what he was committing to. And I saw on the, the side over here, Amy was holding him. He was sitting on her lap and he jumped up and ran. 
He knew the way backstage. He knew all that. Amy was on the worship team, and he knew the secret paths. I looked at Amy. I was like, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> and he was baptized. His enthusiasm. He didn't get up out of duty. He didn't trudge up to me. He ran. I thought he was going to cannonball into the baptistry for a minute. <laughs> and as a father, I was so proud of his enthusiasm to follow the example that I set for him, to follow the example that Jesus set for him. Can you imagine how God feels when we jump up and run to follow him, to do what he calls us to do? I want the best for my family. I want my family to follow scriptures and to be who God has called us to be. And I consider you all family. We are family. I want your resolution to be to follow God more closely than ever before. I want for myself, for Crawford, for the girls, for Amy, for you all to do better at being a follower of God than you've done up to this point. I want us all to be devout. I want us to take these resolutions and make it past January, make it past February, make it to the end, to run the race, to be devout like John the Baptist, to be devout like Jesus. Where do you stand? Are you committed completely? Are you devout? What will it take? We're going to sing another song together. And maybe right now you need to have some prayers to be a little more devout, to follow more closely the examples of, of John the Baptist and Jesus. Maybe you need to come forward and commit your life to being a devout follower of Christ for the first time. Or maybe you want to be accountable to living a life that God's called you to, and you want to call this church your church home and make this your church family. Now is the time to come forward, and let's make those decisions. Let's make that happen, and let's be devout followers of our Lord and Savior. Please pray with me. God, thank you so much. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for the joy that we have when we follow you, when we obey you, God. I pray that we would have the strength each day to do better than we did yesterday at following you, that we would be more devout today than we were yesterday, that we would make you more proud of us today than yesterday, God. I thank you that you give us that strength. You give us that guidance. I pray you would help us to be good examples to those around us so that they too can see that joy and they can come running towards you. Thank you so much for Jesus, and it's in his name I pray. Amen.